I think people think stewardship is about money, and it has nothing to do with money. Stewardship is about faith, and having enough faith and freedom to be willing not to hold on to things, but to let them go. If we're willing not to cling so closely on to this life, or this culture, or what the security that this society tries to offer, we are ultimately the freest people that there are. I think it's part of your growth process in, in, in Christianity. You, you come to certain points in your life where you, you, you know that you're at a crossroads and you have to do something. So it's like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? And he gives you the answer. He, you know, he really tells you how you're to do what you're supposed to do. God has a will for every gift that he gives to us. It's just whether or not we're going to listen to him and listen to the Holy Spirit and respond and um, use those gifts in, in a way that he really wants them to be used. The disciples respond was joy. The disciples' response was joyful mission. Those people that, that are the most faithful givers are, uh, are usually people who are thinking through how am I going to invest what God has given me in His kingdom. The same is true with, with uh, what we've accumulated in life. Um, um, I, more people need to think through the idea that when I leave everything that I've accumulated behind, can't I also honor God with the substance of that stuff? There's a scriptural passage about not laying up for yourself treasures on earth. And I think that that's true. You can't take it with you. So it is important to plan, even if we have modest incomes. So you can still leave something to your family. But the church certainly can benefit from having uh, you know, our, our income and wealth and things that we no longer need as we get older. Uh, and and it, it benefits building up God's kingdom. Although it's sometimes hard to think about it, you don't want to talk about it at the time, it's going to be even worse if you haven't thought about it. And all of a sudden, now it's here, and particularly you've dumped the whole thing on the, on the kids, um, who have to scramble then, uh, who don't necessarily have the same outlook as you do. In our case, I mean, we're trying to bring the children into this thing over time in such a way that they develop an attitude of philanthropy as well. It was just very uh, peaceful having gone through the process because again, it was something that we could do as a couple and even as a family to talk about our choices instead of someone later guessing, but just seeing that there was a plan that would take care of our family, but also continue to help ministries. Whether or not you're a, a Cleveland Indian ball player making $15 million a year, or someone just scraping by paycheck to paycheck, putting someone else's needs in front of your own, God promises to take care of us when we do that. So it doesn't have to be a big gift. You may think it's insignificant when you do it, but I don't think anything, any gift is insignificant to God. Whether it's supporting a missionary family or whether it's supporting seminarians so they can go out um, and serve the Lord and give their whole life to that with joy. Whether it's uh, donating for church bells so there can be a bell choir so music is, is beautiful on Sunday morning and people feel that deeply when they worship. The, the joy of seeing the actual tangible results that somehow the world is better, somebody's life is better because of, of your giving. I don't think you can put words on that. The Lutheran Church and the many organizations um, that sprout from it really cover all aspects of life. There's a place to give to the church no matter what it is that God has put a passion in your heart. So I think in Giving gifts um, is, it does make an impact on people. Well, I can speak of one that we just received at our church. 
We didn't expect it, and here it comes. It made a great impact on me. Surprising things happen when people give, and new opportunities arise. Wow, we never thought we could do that. And somebody says, I was moved to give this gift. I'd like to see what could happen. And a new ministry takes on and, and can go beyond the original scope of those who planned it. Always surprising things happen. There are ministries out there and people out there who need our support. What we do has an impact on other ministries that would not be able to happen if we weren't able to give and to support them. And beyond that, um, when we give, we're not just giving financial support to someone, but we're also saying to those people out there doing ministry on our behalf out in all of those other places that you're not in this alone, that there are brothers and sisters who are supporting you. It's incredibly broad. Uh, if you think about the uh, Lutheran World Relief, which supports people who are in terrible situation, that reaches out to everybody. And in fact, as far as stewardship is concerned, Lutheran Social Ministries are, are the largest contributor to uh, helping people, uh, larger than any other Christian organization. People are, are trying to always try to hold on and grasp so hard and, and, to, and to cling on and hold on to things, and that's just not possible in this life because we're not going to be here forever. This is, you know, and there's only one go round. There's no dress rehearsal for life. This is it. So you might as well give it all. I would say urge people to spend and give it to something that's really going to be meaningful and helpful and promote the good news of Jesus Christ. The image of, of raising dough to me is really interesting because it's, it's not the dough or the bread that, that is the active part, it's the yeast. And just like when we commit to making a financial gift, it's, it's not necessarily our giving or even our dollars that make things happen. It's the Holy Spirit that does, kind of the yeast in all of this. I thought of Elijah and the widow uh, with whom he stayed, whose flour bin was always full uh, because in faith she stepped out and shared her resources with him. So it's God who provides the dough. Um, it's there, and as it is nurtured by the gospel, it is raised and uh, becomes a benefit for all those who are involved. When I first saw the theme of raising dough, the first biblical image that popped into my mind was from the Old Testament, cast your bread upon the waters and, and it will return to you. And also you have the, the imagery of, of Paul talking about that God gives God gives the seed to the sowers so that they can harvest it and then have enough left over to do something with. That's my image of, of the way God hands us the blessing of, of our finances and, and money. Uh, that it's for our benefit, but also for the benefit of others whom we will touch with, with, with that blessing. Well, you're like a conduit sometimes of the, the, the stuff that God spills in you. is The more you spill it out, the more he seems to just resupply it and, and uh, make it even more. And he, I think when he sees us honoring him, he just, he grins himself a little bit, takes a little smile and keeps passing stuff down. Mm -hmm.